the Toronto Raptors will not repeat as NBA champions after falling to the Boston Celtics in Game 7 in the second round of the NBA playoffs. It was a noble title defense from Toronto, but ultimately they fell short after the Celtics just outplayed them in a hard-fought seven-game series. With multiple free agents coming up, but a lot of cap space in the looming summer of 2021, the Raptors are well set up to put together a very competitive team for years to come, but they have a lot of questions this upcoming summer with what to do with their players and where they should allocate their resources and cap space. Welcome back everybody, it's Courtside TV, and today we're going to be talking about the Toronto Raptors. The Raptors leader Kyle Lowry has put all those bad playoff narratives to rest after he won the title last year and came out with a strong showing against the Celtics this season. Now Lowry has been great for them, but he's getting up there in age. He's 34 years old going on his age 35 season and he's got one year left on his deal after he signed an extension last year. So. Uh, do the Raptors decide that they want to keep Lowry or maybe they flip him to a team that's looking to you know push them to the next level get him onto a real contender for next year even though the Raptors I think can contend maybe they decide that they want to you know acquire picks for their veterans in this upcoming season uh, that would be a possibility but Lowry is obviously a great player he's an all-star perennial all-star he's been awesome for the past couple years for Toronto was a key piece of their championship victory last year they don't win the title without him and so um Lowry has an interesting season coming up as an expiring contract. It'll be interesting to see what the team decides to do with him, but he certainly has a lot of value on that expiring deal and as a player that's certainly a championship level point guard and he'd be ready to, you know, push a team over the hump to get to that next level to potentially win a title. And so I would expect him to be, you know, a very sought after uh, player on the market in uh, the upcoming offseason and then leading into next year as well. Or maybe Lowry is just one of those guys who will play out the rest of his career in Toronto. I know he hasn't been there for his entire career, but you know, the majority of his productive seasons have been with the Raptors, and obviously the title win last year adds a lot to his legacy. He's obviously got a lot of emotions and history associated with the city, so I wouldn't be surprised if he took a small pay cut in the offseason to remain with the team if they do decide to keep him. Just, you know, play out the rest of his career on a team that he's familiar with and that he loves, and he loves the city there. I'm sure he and his family are comfortable. So there's always the chance that he stays, but if for some reason he did become available, there would not be no shortage of teams that we're looking to add him to their arsenal as you know a player that can really help a team contend for a title. Pascal Siakam had a rough postseason and a rough series especially against the Celtics but there's no question that he's absolutely a talented player and he is a franchise building block moving forward. He's still young only 26 and it's natural that a player would have these types of these types of growing pains um, in a series like this. Now he was, you know, kind of one of the unquestioned leaders of this team. Last year he was playing a little bit behind Kawhi Leonard, still trying to find his footage. It was his breakout season last year. This year he was, you know, the full leader of this team. Him and Lowry were the two, you know, go-to scoring options. And Lowry had it hot and Siakam really didn't against Boston. Um, he struggled, but that's okay. You know, it's, like I said, it's all part of the natural process of, you know, becoming a true star in the NBA. He's obviously still young. He just signed his extension on his rookie deal, so he'll be interested for multiple years to come. Um, there have been a couple of rumors on Twitter about the Raptors potentially trading Siakam. I don't, I don't personally give any stock to those. Um, I think that the Raptors will most likely keep Siakam unless, you know, for some reason a huge star became available if they had to include him in a package for Giannis or whoever else I'm sure that they would potentially do a deal like that but Siakam you know he belongs in Toronto he'll remain there um, at least for the next couple years as these first couple years of this extension for sure um, and he'll grow into a nice player for them uh, he struggled but I think he'll be all right I'm not too worried about Siakam and his future in the NBA now Fred Van Vliet might be the biggest question mark in the NBA this offseason for me I have no idea what's going to happen with him. You know, in an offseason where there's not too many big free agents and, you know, most of the bigger names, we're kind of pretty sure that they will stay put where they are. Like the biggest name in free agency is Anthony Davis. He's not going anywhere. He's going to remain a Laker. Um, you know, past that, Van Vliet is one of those marquee names, those guys that are up for a new contract and we're not sure what's going to happen. Is Toronto willing to give him, you know, a large amount of money to remain with the team, um, especially when we know that they're hunting for big free agents the following off season in 2021 they're going to have a lot of cap space um potentially enough for two max players if that ever you know becomes available and so uh van vliet you know maybe he just might be a casualty of the raptors conserving cap space for that off season because he made about nine million dollars this season he's going to make more than double that on his next contract i'm willing to put money on that um 
he's gonna make you know 20 million annually maybe more um so unless he wants to take a pay cut to remain with toronto they're gonna have to you know go upwards of 20 million per season and keep van vliet i'm expecting some of these bad teams to give him an offer potentially the knicks um would give him you know some sort of offer uh, not maybe not quite the max but upwards of 20 million dollars is pretty much what i'm expecting for him now we don't really know what finances will look like with the pandemic and everything um but i'm expecting van vliet in an off season that doesn't have you know a ton of huge free agents he's one of the biggest names out there um he's gonna get a sizable deal and so the biggest question is whether toronto is willing to pay to retain van vliet um or would they rather you know just let him walk as hard as that would be um, and, you know, continue to build this team with around Siakam, um, whatever picks you could, or whatever pieces you could p potentially acquire for Lowry, um, around OG Ananobi as well, who I'll get to, um, and just continue to do that and just, you know, unfortunately let Van, v Van Vliet walk. Um, that's a big question for them, and I'm curious to see what they'll do and how high of a salary number they're willing to go for Van Vliet. Now, OG Ananobi, first of all, what an incredible shot to take that game three against the Celtics um, in the second round. That was a, an amazing pass by Lowry, an amazing shot by OG to take that game, push that series to a game seven. Um, it, they didn't end up taking it, but still, I mean, that was just an all-timer with half a second on the clock drilling it. Man, OG is awesome. Um, but he is definitely a building block for this team, um, not only with his shot making, but just his defensive versatility. Um, his, he's a great leader. He's got the passing vision, everything. OG's just a complete player. He may never make an all-star team, but he's one of those guys that is just super valuable. And you see it every time you watch Toronto, you know, he's so versatile. He's great defensively. He just checks all the boxes, does all the little things. OG is, you know, he's the real deal. Um, and he has two years left, or sorry, the next season will be the last year of his rookie deal. He will probably likely get a sizable extension on that. Um, that's, you know, an order of business for Toronto to work out. Um, he won't get a max extension, but he'll get something fairly, he'll, they'll, they'll give him something fair. Um, you know, 15 million ish a season is about what he's worth. Maybe not quite that much, but, but he's definitely a great player. Somebody the Raptors want to keep around. Um, and at only 23 years old, he's only going to get better. And so OG on a is you know a franchise building block for this team him and Siakam are going to be the future of the Raptors um, if you know they don't decide to retain Fred, Fred Van Vliet and if you know well Lowry is on his way out um, even if he doesn't leave the team you know he's he's getting up there in age and so they'll have to transition away from him eventually so OG and Siakam are you know the two huge building blocks on this Raptors team that will be you know a part of their core for for many years to come. So now we look at their cap sheet for the offseason, and they have some interesting decisions to make. I already talked about Fred Van Vliet. Um, his is going to be the biggest question for them this upcoming offseason. He's one of their youngest free agents. You know, he has the most value moving forward. Um, but then you look up at these other guys. Um, Mark Gasol and Serge Ibaka both are due for an extension, um, and it's unclear whether or not the Raptors are going to want to you know pay significantly to keep them um i'm leaning towards no i think that it's most likely that both of those guys will leave the team in the offseason um if not ibaka definitely gasol gasol is 35 going on 36 um if he comes back to the raptors it'll be on a deal pretty small maybe the mid-level exception um, and he can make that with a different team that's potentially a little bit more of a contender for next year um, and they're not going to want to pay him long-term money not only because of his age but because they are conserving cap space and so if Gasol does come back to the Raptors it'll be on a short-term contract probably a one-year deal um, I personally don't see it happening I think he leaves um, Ibaka is a different question he's younger he's probably better at this point um, and so maybe there's an extension for Ibaka. I think that's a little more likely, but I still think it's just as likely that he leaves in free agency. The Raptors probably aren't going to be willing to commit a long-term salary, a large amount of money to Ibaka. And I think there will be another team that probably will be willing to pay that for a guy who is, you know, he's not as good as he once was defensively, but he's still great as a five man can shoot the three. Um, and he's just versatile. He can make those jump shots, a good defender, all that. 
Um, and he's just a good player and the type of player that contenders would want to have still in the prime of his career. And so um, I think Ibaka will make, you know, a sizable amount of money on the open market, similar to Van Vliet, especially in the offseason where there isn't as many great free agents out there. Um, he could potentially be one of the most sought after targets. So um, if I had to bet, I honestly would think that both of them are going to leave this offseason, especially Gasol, um, Ibaka, who knows. Um, and then just moving on down there, you have Ronde Hollis Jefferson, who was okay, didn't really play much, came off the bench a little bit. Um, maybe another one-year deal, they don't really care about him. Um, Malcolm Miller, same deal, he was okay, didn't play much. Um, Chris Boucher played a little bit, um, and he's still, you know, still a raw enough prospect with, with good defensive potential. Um, that I think he warrants another look from Toronto. Just credit to their player development staff for, for finding and developing these guys because these guys are, you know, cast offs from other teams, often went undrafted, plucked off G League squads, um, and, and Boucher has been, you know, a, a nice surprise for them and him being able to get minutes for this team. So so maybe they'll bring him back um, as a guy with, with some high potential, even though he's already 27, but he still has room to get better and grow with his uh, with his profile and his length and his visit or his physical profile, um, and so maybe uh, Boucher would be a guy that they would like to bring back. But beyond that, um, a player option for Stanley Johnson doesn't really matter too much. Um, but their their biggest questions in the offseason are going to be Van Vliet and Ibaka um, for sure, um, and those two I think. The Raptors are probably losing a lot of sleep over it already because, man, those are some tough decisions coming up. And this, to me, is one of the most interesting off-seasons in the NBA because we know they're trying to conserve cap space. They're still trying to be a good team. And these two free agents are some of the best available in the free agent pool. So how much are other teams willing to offer? How much are the Raptors willing to go up to? Um, are they going to be big one-year deals to potentially let them enter free agency again as and let the Raptors conserve in cap space? Who knows? You know, there's multiple different directions they could go in here. Um, potentially there's sign and trades evolved. Maybe a trade for Kyle Lowry, like I mentioned. Norman Powell um, is on a movable contract. And so the Raptors could potentially really shake things up this offseason. And I'll be interested to see what they do. So overall, I think they have some of the biggest questions going into the offseason. And I will be very, you know, I'll be tuned in to see all the rumors surrounding Van Vliet and Ibaka's free agency and what's up with all of that because that's some of the most interesting stuff in the NBA to me. Um, those are both guys that will be sought after by contenders and so does Toronto want to keep them or do they want to conserve their cap space and that's just going to be what everybody's talking about until um, free agency happens and so um, other than that I think the Raptors just need to target guys um, who can just come in and, and fill out their rotation a little bit more like i said i mentioned their core players they've got nice depth as well um and they've just got a player development staff that just finds guys and cranks them out and turns them into prospects um i mentioned uh chris boucher but other guys like terrence davis matt thomas um you know all these and and even siakam too and and og Ananobi, both late first round picks who have now blossomed into these stars um and so they've got a crazy development staff they can find these guys they know how to get their hands on players who you know they can unlock them and so just keep doing that if you're the raptors um keep finding those guys who are who are raw and have good defensive capability shooting skills whatever you know that's the market inefficiency in the nba right now and teams with good development staffs we're seeing them reap the benefits of that not only the raptors but you know the miami heat what we've seen what they've done um being in the conference finals right now with guys like duncan robinson and and tyler hero and kendrick nunn um and that's just one example you know and, and the raptors are, are one of those teams with a really great player development staff and so um credit to them for that and they just need to keep finding those guys who they can they can churn out and and turn them into nba players and even van vliet i i didn't even talk about van vliet he was undrafted and now he's gonna make you know 20 million a season and so uh that's just incredible what they can do um and so in the draft just targeting those guys who are a little bit raw um, but have a high ceiling i think that's the best thing that they can do um and just you know monitoring what they're going to do with their free agents because are they going to be a free agency destination in 2021 um do they want to bring back their guys on long-term contracts if they don't feel like that um just a lot of questions around the raptors
So that's pretty much all I have to say about this team. Um, like I said, one of the most interesting off seasons in the NBA for me, um, and I'll definitely be monitoring what's going on. Definitely excited to see what the Raptors decide to do. They've got some big decisions coming up. So um, that's going to be it for my preview on the Toronto Raptors. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, and I will be back within the next couple days with a preview on a team that was, you know, eliminated maybe a little bit earlier. I'm not sure who I'm going to talk about yet, but definitely we'll be getting to Denver, Lakers, Miami, Boston um, as they are eliminated from the playoffs and then whoever wins the finals we'll talk about them but um, for now while we're waiting for those series to wrap up I'll probably go back um, take a look at you know some of the teams that were eliminated in the first round maybe teams that didn't make the bubble um, or, did, or just missed the playoffs because that we got those in-market bubbles coming up this week and next week so we might have some news coming out from there um, seeing what's going on with the teams that weren't in the bubble because we haven't really seen them for a while and so um, maybe there's something that goes on with that um, but like I said that's going to be it um, for today's video about the Raptors and uh, shameless plug alert guys check me out on Twitter um, check me out on TikTok and on Twitch um, I haven't streamed in a while, but potentially that's something we'll be starting back up, um, just with some gaming content. Um, and then yeah, I've started putting my picks for each game on TikTok. Uh, that's been kind of fun. Um, and then my Twitter, of course, I just tweet out everything, talk about the games, whatever. Um, so check me out on all those platforms there. Um, Courtside TV everywhere. Uh, links should be in the description. Um, so check that out. And uh, that's going to be it for my video on the Raptors. I'll be back with the next couple days with another video. So uh, thanks, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.